why on Palm Sunday do we read the whole passion narrative? <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I know like we're entering into this Holy Week. So I think it gives a whole story. It gives a story, mm -hmm. right? I think there's like, if you want to, I can't remember who said this. I just heard this recently. I read it recently. Like all the scriptures, everything about our faith is boiled down into this week. Yeah. Like quite literally, like everything is about this week, the yeah. passion, death, resurrection of Jesus. And we celebrate it within three days. And so I think it kind of gives that starting point, right? Yeah. I found it interesting that historically, and this is why if you're a disciple, you have to be steeped in history, specifically the church's history, because that's the story of our family. That Easter was the first celebration, the first commemoration that we preserved. It wasn't Christmas, it mm -hmm. wasn't Pentecost, it wasn't, it was Easter, the fact that the tomb was empty. Yeah. And so what I, what I love and what the wisdom of the church is in, in Palm Sunday is that we go over the whole passion narrative because it's almost like a prelude to what is about to come. You know, you read a book, the author mm -hmm. summarizes why it is and the ideas, and but then the book goes in detail. That's what Palm Sunday does for us. And I never fully appreciated that. It was like, okay, I just gotta stand for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. yeah, but that's what it is. It's but like, I, this is oh, what we're about to enter into. Yeah, and I love how, I love the church when she, she gets you right to the edge and then says like, and we're gonna hold you there because we yeah. don't read the resurrection. Mm -hmm. He's laid in the tomb. The gospel of the Lord, right? Like we're going to hold you in this tension to say like, no, this is like, we're going to stay in this space until Sunday, mm -hmm. until next Sunday. Yeah. And then all the things that happen, you know, after Palm Sunday that, you know, we, we forget about the, you know, the G Jesus crying over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. right? you know, the, he's knowing what's going to happen. That's why Monday and Tuesday are so important. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. You can't just gloss over. It'd be beautiful for us to really catechize our people. Can't, it's not like, okay, Palm Sunday. See you all Thursday. Yeah, and great. <laughs> and then Thursday. All no, it kind of feels happening. like it, though. It right? does. Yeah. It's like, okay, we have a couple of days to catch our breath and restart again for Thursday. But that's what I love about the seasons in the church. Like, you have Lent season, mm -hmm. Palm Sunday, like really intense focus. And then you have Triduum, which will it'd be yeah. great to get a definition and explanation of what Triduum is. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are so important because that's what – we ought to be accompanying our Lord and the apostles and, yeah. and the early church in the preparations. And, and Jesus does so many things. He curses a fig, fig tree. tree. Like, why would you curse a fig tree out of season? Mm -hmm. He cleanses the temple again. Why would you do that? Like, why are you drawing all this attention to yourself? Mm -hmm. um, he, he spends his time, his last couple of days with some friends. Yeah. Like, what's the significance in that, in, in, with those particular people in that space? And that, that parable of the, the vineyard owner. That's one I think that really got the, the Pharisees really, uh, really going, telling them, you know, hey, I'm going to send my own son, and now I'm take, he's going to take it away from you. And they knew exactly what they were saying. That was part of the, the, the crescendo, I think. Mm -hmm. It does build on itself. It's really, really cool.